Okay, right. Uh, welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the biosynthesis of cholesterol. Okay, right. So, where have we got to so far? So, we have got to the production of these two activated isoprenes here, delta-free isopentenyl pyrophosphate and also dimethyl alyl pyrophosphate. What we now want to see is how we can use delta-free isopentanyl pyrophosphate and dimethyl alyl pyrophosphate to synthesize uh, the cholesterol molecule. Okay, now, we're going to therefore turn our attention to stage 3 of this process. Okay, and stage 3 is using these activated uh, isoprene molecules to synthesize a squalene molecule. Okay, so stage three then. So to start with, it's going to be helpful to um, go from drawing these molecular formulas of delta three isopentenyl pyrophosphate and dimethyl alyl pyrophosphate to going over to drawing their skeletal formulae because otherwise it gets just unbearably complicated if we uh, continue with the molecular formulae. Okay, so let's draw our um, skeletal formulae for iso, sorry, delta three isopentanyl pyrophosphate and also our dimethyl alyl pyrophosphate. So firstly, we'll start off with delta three isopentanyl pyrophosphate. Okay, so let's draw the skeletal formula for this molecule. So. Remember, delta three isopentanyl pyrophosphate had this double bond between uh, the carbon on the end and the second carbon in. Okay, so that's this bond here. Then we had a methyl group coming off, then an ethylene group. Okay, so here we have our methyl group. Then we have our ethylene group, like so, so one, two carbons. And now we have our pyrophosphate coming off here. So off here we're going to have our pyrophosphate group, like so. Okay, right. Uh, and um, as discussed previously, the um, oxygen atoms coming off these phosphate groups are likely to all be in the deprotonated form as shown here. So this is delta three isopentanyl pyrophosphate's uh, skeletal formula. Now let's draw the skeletal formula for dimethyl alyl pyrophosphate and then we'll see how we're going to join these together to firstly get geronyl um, pyrophosphate and then get farnazyl pyrophosphate and how we're going to join two farnazyl pyrophosphates together to create squalene. Okay, which will start to resemble a cholesterol molecule. If we draw it in the right way, it will start to resemble a cholesterol molecule. Okay, so dimethyl alyl pyrophosphate then. So remember in dimethyl alyl pyrophosphate, the double bond is between the second and third carbons here. Although actually you're, you usually view uh, the um, carbon off which the pyrophosphate comes as the um, first carbon. So this one would be the second and this one would be the third. Okay, right. So the structure then of dimethyl alyl pyrophosphate You'd have a double bond here, then another group there, and then you'll have this pyrophosphate coming off here. Okay, like so. So a very similar structure to delta three isopentanyl pyrophosphate, which of course we know it is because they are structural isomers of each other, and the enzyme uh, isopentanyl pyrophosphate isomerase takes you between the two uh, forms. Okay, right. So, what we're now going to do is synthesize a squalene molecule from these, okay? And to do this, we're going to need two of these and four of these, okay? Now, the first step is, join, is to join a dimethyl alyl pyrophosphate with a delta free isopentanyl uh, pyrophosphate molecule. Okay, so let's see how this occurs. So firstly, what we're going to do is we're going to add the delta free isopentanyl pyrophosphate onto the dimethyl alyl pyrophosphate. So firstly, what we can imagine doing is 
breaking this double bond, sorry, this single bond here, between this carbon here and this oxygen here, and sending both electrons back to this oxygen. Now, this for this moment, this is actually going to be an electronic flow diagram rather than just a um, an account of how the reaction makes sense, okay? So we'll send both electrons here to this oxygen. Now, one of those electrons belonged to the oxygen, and the other didn't belong to that oxygen. So therefore, the oxygen has gained a single electron and is therefore going to have a negative charge now. Okay, right. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to use the electrons in one of these bonds uh, within this double bond at the end of the delta-free isopentanyl pyrophosphate molecule to bind to this carbon here. So we're going to use these two electrons to form a bond between this carbon and this carbon. So understand what we're doing. In this bond here, so one of these two bonds in this double bond, uh, we have two electrons, one from each of these carbons here. This carbon is going to take both of those electrons, okay? So it's nicked one effectively off this carbon and one already belonged to it. It's now going to use those two electrons to form a covalent bond with this carbon here, which remember has lost an electron because it lost one to this oxygen. So you're now going to put both electrons in, effectively donating an electron to this carbon basically. And that will create you a single covalent bond between this carbon and this carbon. Now what we're left with is this carbon here has lost an electron, which overall has ended up being given to this carbon down here. So what you're going to now do is you're going to use one of the hydrogens that is bound to this carbon. So this is a methylene group here. So I'll temporarily show one of the hydrogens. So I'll break the skeletal formula and show one of these hydrogens attached to the carbon. Basically, both of these electrons that are in this bond between this carbon and hydrogen are now going to be taken back by this carbon here. Okay, so one belonged to the carbon, the other belonged to the hydrogen. The hydrogen's going to lose its electron. This carbon's going to take both of them, and it's going to use them to make a covalent bond between this carbon here and this carbon here to turn that into a double bond. Okay, so these two electrons here are going to go there, and this proton is going to go off with a positive charge, and potentially it will join with this pyrophosphate here, because the pyrophosphate, as soon as you release it, it won't stay with a four negative charges, it will at least get a single proton, maybe this one here, from the solution. Or, you know, it's unlikely to be that exact one, it might get another one from the solution. But the effect is still the same. Okay, right, so let's draw what you create then when you do this reaction. And I'll tell you the enzyme which actually catalyzes this reaction in a moment. So. Here then, we'll start by drawing the dimethyl amyl portion. So the pyrophosphate's gone off. Here is this carbon here. It's now bound to this carbon here. So let me color code this. So this carbon here is this carbon here. Okay. This carbon here, circled in green now, is this carbon here, which I'll circle in a moment. Okay. It's now got a single bond between itself and this carbon up here. And this carbon up here has a double bond between itself and that carbon there. Okay, and then we'll continue on the structure and we've still got the pyrophosphate group stuck on here. Okay, like so. So we have these two phosphate groups attached to one another. And most of those oxygens will have negative charges because they'll have lost their protons under physiological pH. So this carbon here is that carbon up there. Okay, right. So, we have now added on the delta-free isopentanyl pyrophosphate onto the dimethyl amyl pyrophosphate. Okay, and the enzyme which catalyzes this reaction is called prenyl transferase. So this is prenyl transferase's job to uh, produce this new molecule that we have here. So what is this new molecule called? Well, basically, when you attach two isoprene molecules together, which is effectively what we have done here, we've got a polymer of two isoprene molecules. So remember, if we go back to what isoprene looked like, it was this molecule here. If we drew the uh, skeletal structure of an isoprene polymer, let's just do that. Okay, so drawing the skeletal structure of this, here is this first carbon, here is this second carbon with a methyl group coming off it. There's a double bond between this carbon here and this carbon here. 
then we've got a single bond between this carbon here and this carbon here, then this carbon will be linked to another isoprene molecule, so if we draw another one of these here, like so, then we've got those two linked together like that. And if you actually look at this, that's exactly what we've got here. I've drawn it in a different way, and the reason I've drawn it like that will become apparent because I'm basically tracing uh, the cholesterol rings, basically, because that's what we're overall aiming for. But that is what I've got here. Two isoprene molecules linked together with a pyrophosphate on one side. So this is geranile. Whenever you have two isoprene molecules polymerized together, it's called geranile, and therefore it's geranile pyrophosphate. So that's the name for this molecule. So prenyl transferase adds this uh, delta-free isopentanyl pyrophosphate onto the dimethyl alyl pyrophosphate. Now, prenyl transferase hasn't finished yet. It's going to do exactly the same thing again, but it's going to add it, the delta-free isopentanyl pyrophosphate this time onto this structure here, basically. Okay, so what we're now going to do is break this bond here. It's exactly the same process. We're going to break this uh, single bond between this carbon and this oxygen, and we're going to give both electrons to the oxygen, and therefore this carbon will get a positive charge, and the pyrophosphate will go off with four negative charges and will take protons from the solution, therefore. Okay, then the same process is going to happen with a delta-free isopentanyl pyrophosphate. It's going to come in here, uh, it will give the two electrons in one of these double bond, well, in one of the bonds of this double bond uh, to uh, this carbon here, okay, and you'll form a covalent bond between um, this carbon here and this carbon here, okay, and then one of the hydrogens will break off to make a double bond there. So let me draw the product here. Okay, so let's start by just drawing what we had originally again. So uh, starting down here, here is uh, this double bond here. So this is our first isoprene molecule here. It's then linked to the second isoprene molecule, which is here. Okay, and now what we're going to have is if I color code these carbons, this one is here in purple, and now I'm going to have to denote this next one in green again. Okay, so here is the vivid purple one. Okay, and now you're adding on another isoprene molecule, basically, like so. Okay, and it will still have the pyrophosphate attached to it. So here is the pyrophosphate, like so. There's the first phosphate. Here is the second phosphate attached onto that. Okay, right. So I just color code that carbon in green again. There it is. So there's our next delta free isopentanyl pyrophosphate added onto our geranile molecule. Okay, and now we've got three um, isoprene molecules polymerized together. And when you have three isoprene molecules polymerized together, this is known as a farnesyl molecule. And because we've got a pyrophosphate on the end, this is farnesyl pyrophosphate. Okay, right. Uh, now, what we're going to do next is um, we're going to take two farnesyl pyrophosphates and bind them together. And remember what went into a farnesyl pyrophosphate. We started with a dimethyl alyl pyrophosphate. That was the starting, that was the first isoprene molecule. Since then, we have added in two delta free isopentanyl pyrophosphates. Both of those additions were catalyzed by the enzyme prenyl transferase. And we have ended up then with a farnesyl pyrophosphate. Okay, and what we're going to do basically is get another farnesyl pyrophosphate and bind the two together to make a squalene molecule. Okay, so this is the biggest addition. This is the most complicated bit. Okay, and the first challenge is we now have to draw one of these molecules upside down to be able to understand this. Okay, so let's try drawing one of these molecules upside down then. So what I'm going to do is effectively do it like that. So basically, we start off with this carbon down here now pointing upwards and in that direction. Then we've got this little structure here. So that is this here. Okay, then we've got this bond here, which is this. So I'm just drawing out another farnesyl pyrophosphate, but I'm drawing it out upside down. And I'm going to have to be careful because I want uh, to be able to link this onto another one. So I'd like to have enough space here. 
Okay, right. So then we've got this bond here, which is this one here. Then we've got this one here, this one here, like so. That methyl group coming up here. Okay, so this is quite fun actually drawing upside down. Then we've got this, 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 um, then down like that onto here. That needs to be a double bond, so I'm here now. Okay, and then we've got this one going up, this one coming back down, and then it's attached to a pyrophosphate. Okay, however, I'm not going to draw that. This should be an oxygen here. Okay, but what's going to happen? Let me show you what's going to happen to each of these Farnesyl uh, pyrophosphates. Okay, so now's the point where we stop with the actual electronic mechanisms. We did electronic mechanisms back there because they were incredibly simple. Okay, we're going to stop now. We're just going to try and understand the reaction. So what you can imagine doing is breaking the bond between this carbon and this oxygen and sending one electron back to this carbon and one back to this oxygen. Okay, that will uh, create you a pyrophosphate that is not complete yet because that has a free radical there so we need to do something about that and I'll talk about that in a moment. So we've got two, we start off with two of these Farnesyl pyrophosphates and we're going to do this for both of them. That means that this carbon here, which is the equivalent carbon to this one up here, both of these carbons that I've now circled in pink are going to have free electrons. What I now want to do is bind the two together. So what I'm going to do is bring this down here and draw it on here. Okay, right, so understand that that was just this thing upside down. So now I'm drawing this one the right way up. Okay, so here is this other carbon labelled over here. So this one is this one. Okay, right. Now let's continue on the structure. So that, this is easier. We just have to copy out now. Okay, so we've got a methyl group sticking up there. That's that green carbon over there. Okay, coming down here, we've got this bit. We'll have a double bond there, a little methyl group sticking up there, downwards further, and then into our final isoprene molecule right down here. Okay, so then we've got a double bond there, Got the methyl group sticking up and another methyl group off there. Okay, so this whole molecule that we've not now got here, this is called squalene. Okay, and basically this reaction is going to be catalyzed by an enzyme called squalene synthase. Okay, so squalene synthase. Now, uh, to catalyze this react, well, to do this reaction at all, we need. Um, we need a molecule of reduced NADP, okay? So the reason we need that is because of these pyrophosphates that we're producing. We can't just have free radicals there. That's not good, okay? So what you need to do is you need to bring in a molecule of reduced NADP, okay? So here is our reduced NADP, NADPH. We'll also bring in a proton. So the NADPH will provide the hydride anion, i.e. a hydrogen atom with an additional electron. We'll bring in this proton as well. That means that overall we're effectively bringing in two hydrogen atoms. And basically we're going to be producing these two pyrophosphates at the moment which have free radicals. You can understand this reaction by thinking that we'll put one hydrogen atom onto this oxygen here and the other hydrogen atom onto the pyrophosphate that you'd have got by breaking it off this other Farnesyl pyrophosphate. So coming out you'll have Two molecules, sorry, you'll have a molecule of reduced NADP. Okay, right. And also, of course, you'll be producing two molecules of pyrophosphate, PPI for short. Okay, right. So that's the synthesis of squalene from our activated isoprene molecules. Okay, so that's stage three now complete. Stage three is taking the delta three isopentanyl pyrophosphate and the dimethyl alyl pyrophosphate and synthesizing squalene as so. And let's just think about what it took to make one of these molecules. Well, to make every single Farnesyl pyrophosphate, we needed one molecule of dimethyl alyl pyrophosphate to produce the um, first isoprene within this isoprene polymer. We then needed two molecules of delta-3 isopentanyl pyrophosphate to make the second and the first isoprene uh, molecules within the polymer. Okay, We took two of those, therefore we need two um, 
dimethyl alyl pyrophosphates to make the two isoprene groups that are on either side, and then four uh, delta free isopentanyl pyrophosphates to make the portions in the middle. Okay, and that's how you can make a squalene molecule. Okay, stage four now is going to be the conversion of squalene into cholesterol, and we'll do that in the next video.